achievement, educational achievement. You have to go to school. My children must go to school. And their, their form of education is basically that of formal education. Major vehicle to helping the upper class. They are always thinking of helping the upper class because the middle class go to school. After they have gone to school, they say, okay, get this right, get this right, and then go to school, go to school, so that you can do what? Get employed. To who? To the upper class. They are the ones, they are the vehicles they help the upper class to actualize their dream and make them build wealth much more. You see in protest, you don't, you hardly see the upper class. <laughs> you hardly see the upper class. Even their children will never be in the protest so much. It is the people they just talk to the middle, the lower class, and they take it up. They are always misguided by the upper class. Then mostly live off the dream of the upper class. Their dream is off the dream of the upper class. They live on their dreams of the upper class. And there are other points. They see the upper class also as opportunists. They see the upper class, oh, they, are, don't mind them. they are only taking advantage of us. They, always, they are always content with just enough. That's the lower class. They are always contented with just enough. Just enough. As long as the idea is as big as my mindset, it is enough. Content with just enough. The world is comfortable with the church at this position. The world is always comfortable with the church, and that is why that added has become as poor as the church rat. The world, as long as the world is comfortable with the world, with the world, with the church at this point, anytime you talk of prosperity or wealth in the church, and people are saying, hey, hey, even the church does not know, they just kick against it. How can you be talking of wealth? Don't you want to make heaven? But people forget that before you go to heaven, you must live on earth. A lot of people will get to heaven and they will become nuisance. You know how they become nuisance? Because in heaven you are going to walk, walk on the streets of gold. So when you tell some people to walk on the streets of gold, they say, mm, on this? No, I can't walk on the street. The smallest building in heaven is a mansion. Jesus Christ said, I'm going to my father to build a mansion for you. In my father's house there are many mansions. There are no bungalows, there are no small building. So a lot of people we may become because they are not used to it. And it is zero go for every one of us to be used to, to wealth. The world is always comfortable with the church being at this position. But we're going to reverse it. Somebody say amen. amen. Most church, most church goers sink in this area. Why? With the hope of making heaven. Let me just make heaven anyhow. I can be poor. 
Then we use the example of Lazarus and the rich man. You see, Lazarus, very poor. You saw him? Where was Lazarus living? At the gates of the rich man. Then dogs were licking his wounds. And then Lazarus made what? He made heaven. You remember that rich man? Where is he? He's in hell. So don't be rich. But that is not true. Abraham, the father of faith. The Bible says he was very wealthy. Abraham was so wealthy that he had a hammer to himself. When Lot, his nephew, was captured with the people of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, it was the hammer of Abraham that went against the nations, defeated those nations, and took all the spoil and everything back. And the king of this nation said to him, Take all the spoils and give me back my people. Why? Because the scripture makes it clear that the honor of a king is in the multitude of his people. He said, let me have my honor back. Give me the people. Why you take all the possession? And Abraham said, no, I'm not going to touch it, lest you will say that it was because of me that Abraham became wealthy. That means Abraham knew himself that he was very wealthy. He didn't want anybody to share it. You will be wealthy. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you sincerely. That was as mean as that was as big as this. And he said, no. So don't have the mentality that when you are poor, or the people, poor people will make heaven. No, poor people are in hell. Poor people are also in heaven. Rich people are in hell. Rich people are also in heaven. So it's your choice. That's why the person of Jesus is important. So making money is different from creating wealth. Please note that. Making money is different from creating wealth. If you spend so much on depreciating assets and and not on appreciating wealth or appreciating assets or wealth, you are making money but not creating wealth. A lot of people believe that when you make money, you have high income, you make more profit. That translates to you being wealthy. No, sir. No. If you continue to spend your money on depreciating wealth and not appreciating wealth, for example, you are in the habit of always, you buy a car after another version comes out, your car is still going to say, look, let me go and trade it in, and I want to get a new one. That vehicle, immediately you put a number to it, it drops. I'm not saying you should use a good car. Use a good car, but be wise with it. Don't spend your money on depreciating assets. Spend your money on appreciating assets. So, making money is not so much a function of what you earn, but it's a function of where you put the money. Your wealth likely depends on your income or on that of your parents, if you have inheritance. But, but it majorly depends on your spending. It's not only on your income, it depends on your spending. That is what remains after you have spent. If you are earning $10,000 in a month, it's not the amount that you earn that matters. But how much remains after you have spent? And if you remember one of the teachings we took when we talk about budgeting, when do you save? You do not save after you have spent. The first thing you do when you earn your income, the starting point is you take out your tithe, which you give to God. The second thing is you pay yourself. What do I mean? Take out your savings. Know that this is the amount I want to save. Take it out because if you spend, and then after they spend, I get a want to say, I will say what remains, I can guarantee you it will not remain. It may not remain. It may not remain. So what do you do? You first of all save. And that is talking of what remains. Save before you start spending. Do not expect to spend all your income on consumed goods and services and expect to build wealth, no matter how much you earn. You're always buying and buying consumables, consumables, consumables. Every sale in town, oh, there is a sale. I want to tell you sincerely, all those sales, do you think the companies are full? No, they are still making their profit. They are still making their profit. A lot of us, the, one of the points we said in one of our teachings in here is that the wealthy spend their money to buy sales of stocks and bonds. While the poor, they spend their funds to buy sales of clothing only. While the people are buying all their sale of clothes, their sale of shoes, their sale of boots, <laughs> the poor will always go after it. Why? The upper class has provided it. 
So the middle class and the lower class will come and purchase it and give them their money. While the rich or the people who are on their way to wealth, they are always looking at the stocks. Oh, these stocks is cheap now. It's like these stocks is on sale. And what do they do? They catch it. They buy. And they keep, they keep it up. Because wealth is not a thing. It's not, wealth is something that builds. You don't enter into wealth all of a sudden. And your own always have to know. Seed time and harvest time will not cease. There will always be a time in a person's life when there will be a lot of funds that will come to your hand. And I tell you, those times will never always be like that. Because as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will, not, will never cease. That is the time of harvest. When money comes to you, when wealth comes to you, remember, wealth, money has wings. When it comes in like that, it's not a time for you not to be able to say, I want to change my cars, I want to change everything. When the things you are still having is still good. What do you do? They are excess. What do you do? You sow it. Because a time is coming when that wealth will not come as it is coming. So what do you do at some time? When the money is coming, that's the way God has created life. That's the way God has created everyone. There will come a time, money will come to you. What do you do for that during that time? To please don't make the mistake. I'll spend everything on consumables. Are you there? Yes. It, it, it may look hard, but it's better for you to be hard on yourself during the time of abundance than to be frivolous. And then at the end of the day, when the time of drought comes, then you don't, you can't even pay your bills, you can't do those things. It's shameful at such time. I was listening some time ago to this man who um, he was one time the richest man, the man called Slime, the Mexican, is into telecoms and all. I was watching on his, I was watching him on TV, on CNN. He was being interviewed by Larry King many years back when he was, became the richest man in the world. And he asked him, why is that your company was not so moved during the recession, when the world was going through recession? I can never forget the answer he gave, and I will quote it the way he said it. Is that during the time of prosperity, we were living as though we're in austerity? So during the time of boom, we were living as though we were in austerity. So when the time of austerity came, our lifestyle was not touched at all. That is a business person. Kenneth Hagin, I read one of his books, Kenneth Hagin is the minister of the gospel. He was, but during the time of boom, he was busy doing many, many outreaches, many, many outreaches. And one of the days, that's the advantage of being a Christian. One of the days is that he woke up and he was praying in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Can I cut down on your outreaches? Lay off people. So what the prayer economy said, no, lay off people. Cut down on your outreaches. This one, I didn't send you to do it. It was just your thought because you had plenty of money. You wanted to talk life is good. I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't say, so cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. Lay off, lay off, lay off, lay off. Put everything inside. Let these people go when they are still a boom. They can get other places. And he got to the office, he said he did exactly what the Spirit of God told him. And after he did that, those people got jobs and they moved on during the time of boom. And shortly after that time, there was a huge recession. And his office was already ahead. That is the move of the Spirit. But if you don't have, you cannot hear God. <laughs> the way you can hear God, then during the time of prosperity, please, it's not a time to go on a spending spree. Don't spend your money on consumable. There will come a time of boom. And there will become a time of austerity. There's a time of prosperity and a time of austerity. So live your life. Live your life well. Do not expend, do not expect to spend all your income on consumable goods and services and expect to build wealth. At times, you increase your wealth in a way that many of you do not count, many of us do not count as making money. For example, a piece of property purchased may appreciate in value over time only at the point of sale you will you will get any value during the time of prosperity during the time of increase a lot of people make money unconsciously a lot of people make money unconsciously i had a man some time ago uh, in nigeria who during the time uh, at the time uh, he bought a land in an house sketch he bought it at a certain amount. I would want to, uh, it's quite huge. I think he bought it around, uh, according to him, if I remember, he bought it then around 250 million. 
coming to the upper class anyway. And within a space of two years or thereabout, he sold it for he sold it for over hundred percent. I mean within a short time. Why? He's a Christian anyway. He bought the land strategically. And after shortly after he bought it, some companies came and said we need that land. And he just called the figure and he said we are going to buy it because it was a time of boom. And then he began to reblock to point. So there are times it is important. When you buy assets, you can buy it and keep. It appreciates over time. But you will not gather the value. You won't make the money until the point of sale. So a lot of people make money at such time. I love a minister of the gospel also was sharing um, some time ago. He said his father bought a land, I think, at some parts of the city. And when the lab, the father bought it, he was he mentioned the amount. And by the time his father now gave him as an inheritance, when he was going to sell, he was selling at a, at a ridiculously big high amount. The father, I think, he said he bought around 50 million, um, talking of Naira now, and by the time he was going to sell it, he said he was selling it for over a billion. He said he was, he was encouraging his member of the church to go and invest in real estate, invest in assets, because it's always appreciated. It's always appreciated. So it is important. But such appreciation will never, never come to pass until when you are going to sell. So when we talk of making wealth, Multiple source of income is a major backbone in building wealth. Please note, multiple sources of income is a major backbone in building wealth. I want to talk about multiple sources of income. I'm not talking of multiple jobs. Please note, there's a difference between multiple sources and multiple jobs. If you are keeping one, two, three jobs, that is not multiple sources because you have to be there before you can earn. No. Multiple sources mean Maybe you are making money in one area and then other sources are coming without you being there. Multiple jobs is not multiple sources because you have to always be there. That has to take you. But it can be a starting point. It could be a starting point to move. So what are examples of multiple sources? Number one, salary. And it is very noted that this is exchanging your time for money. Your salary is if you are not there, you cannot earn. If you are not there, you cannot earn. Exchanging your time for money. 96% of people in the world, they fall into this class. Very, very interesting. They fall into this earning class. It's not a bad start. It's not a bad, bad point to start. But please note, you must have an exit plan if you are on salary. You must have an exit plan from the onset. When we are talking of wealth capacity, building your wealth capacity. You must have an exit plan to your being on salary. And note that it is the worst route in building wealth. That's the worst of it, no matter how much you earn. It's the worst route in building wealth. So uh, looking at what is uh, Patanari talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you trying to tell me that um, I'm on salary. Yeah, you could do better. It's the worst route in building wealth. But it's a good starting point because you have to save and save and save. Because once you save, that saving must be able to make to take you into this position of wealth. I remember I made the, work, the financial outfit I worked with for over 10, over 11, 12 years. One day the chairman of the bank was talking and he said, look, I was telling every one of us to start. He said, you can never be extremely wealthy working for somebody. Ooh. And we were all looking at him. And he was telling us to our face, I have to tell you the truth. So you cannot be extremely wealthy working for somebody. So if you really want to be wealthy, you must build, you must have yours. And I sat back and I looked at it. All the money we made, we looked for deposit, we book credit and all. No matter how much profit we make, we still paid our salary. And at the end of the year, we'll be giving bonuses. Say, hey, and everyone's really looking for, we're looking forward to the bonus. Ah, and you say, we need to make bonus. What is the bonus? They are giving us 5% of the gross profit for every of us who are share. While the directors will sit in the boardroom. <coughs> when they want to talk, <coughs> they will clear their throat before they talk. And when they sneeze, every one of us will shake. <laughs> when they sneeze, we'll catch cold. They don't catch cold, we catch the cold. <laughs> you know? And that is how it is. And that's how it's always been. So, it's the worst way of making wealth. So don't stay there. It's a good point to start. Remember I said that. But don't 